Who's the radio operator of the spacefaring vessel, LB-01? We were given the mission of broadcasting the serialized gaming podcast, Safe Space, to as many people as we possibly could. If you can hear this message, then clearly it's been a success. If that's the case, then you should know that what you're about to listen to is a tabletop role-playing game where five people roll dice and tell a story of science fiction and survival horror using the Mothership game system by Tuesday Night Games. It was originally formatted for YouTube, but the records have been modified for an optimal audio experience. However, be warned, this is a survival horror podcast, and there may be descriptions of violence, gore, psychological terrors and mental trauma that some listeners may find disturbing. If you're still out there, then make sure you have your stim packs ready and whatever refreshments you may need. I'm starting the data recording playback now. This is Safe Space. Episode 6, audio file name, Ghosts in the Machine. Last session, the crew stepped aboard the luxury cruise liner, the Icarus. They were there to fix a mechanical fault, but instead found the ship devoid of any signs of life. Despite there being no one around, Zam immediately headed to the level where the bar was, and the rest of his crew followed. There they found a large dining hall, bar and lounge that contained not a living soul but did have tables plated up with food and glasses filled with drinks, although none of it looked like it had been touched for weeks. More disturbingly was a discarded security pass and a blood trail leading into the dining hall kitchen. Blaze Kelvin and Dr Bill Forrest followed it, as Zam and Wendy headed to the bar. Wendy pausing for a moment briefly to just calm and zen her way to just chilling out in this place which is a strange place to chill out but Wendy managed carpet, it carpet man it had carpet <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah I forgot the die hard moment fucking brilliant. carpet um, <laughs> there there they attempted Wendy and Zam attempted to sneak shots from a seemingly unattended bar that was until a bartending android was activated and began serving them albeit with some odd glitches as this was taking place Blaze and the good doctor discovered a dead body and another android, this time one trapped in the door of a fridge. When Blaze attempted to grab the security guard's weapon, as it was a security guard, he was the corpse, the synthetic chef woke up, tore his arm off and lunged for the former marine. A tense close quarters battle ensued in which Blaze stabbed and shot at the android and Dr. Forrest hit it with a meat hammer (laughs) before with a point-blank shot to the face it was taken down. Wendy rushed to the commotion, leaving Zam with Klaus, the bartender, who seemed to be acting strangely, although Zam seemed to make a connection in the 30 seconds that he was talking to the android. (laughs) But it it was still acting strangely, so strangely that when it launched itself over the bar and towards the doors of the kitchen as the commotion kicked off, Doc Forrest, with Wendy's help, tackled it with a dinner tablecloth before Zam, then shot it in the head 
with a nail gun. <laughs> yes, that happened. Left alone in the scene of the carnage, Blaze looted the corpse of the long dead security guard, security guard Denny. Amongst other things, he found a wallet with some credits and a photo of him and what looked like the rest of his security detail. But where, but where the rest of that security detail were was anybody's guess. And that's where we pick up this week's session. In fact, we pick up not in the kitchen where the carnage took place, but instead back in the vast dining hall and lounge of the Icarus, where Wendy and Dr. Forrest are holding down an android that's wrapped in a tablecloth and sort of twitching and moving. Where its head is, pale synthetic sort of blood sort of leaks from a wound caused from a nail gun, which is currently <laughs> stuck out of weather. <laughs> the top of the head may be. Um, a nail gun that Zan Brazel still has in his hands. And this isn't, when I say nail gun, this isn't like a little thing. It's uh, it's an industrial nail gun that Zan Brazel took with him. Um, as this figure's just sort of twitching. And the three of you are in the dining hall with it. Hold it down, I'll try and hit it again. I was rather hoping we could maybe talk to him. I'm done talking. <laughs> this is talking about something different from what you were talking about before. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Was he talking about his wedding again? Obviously, it's an important moment, and we shouldn't, you know. All right, all right, all right. Let's talk to the droid. Run, run. The door. Shut, shut the door. As it's sort of twitching, and you hear like weird, strange noises and spasms as this thing's like. Klaus, why, why do we have to shut the door? Danger. The, the older chef, android, malfunctioning. Danger. So you're you're trying to help us. You're trying to keep us safe. Protect passengers. Keep safe. Run, Good. run, run. Where are the passengers? Run. Can, can, can you? No. Run. This thing is currently. Its face is still. <laughs> it's like you've tackled a ghost from Pac-Man <laughs> yes. and shot it in the head. <laughs> So this thing is twitching. I'm guessing Wendy probably is doing the majority of hold it, keeping it down. And oh yeah, it, yeah, oh yeah, with military precision. Yeah. I know, I know yeah. how to keep a, yeah. a droid on the floor. <laughs> the mercy, I haven't ripped his legs off yet. Yeah. Um, oh, and, too and, soon. And, and, <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> um, right. As this thing is twitching and just repeating. Occasionally, you do hear the word consume occasionally sort of repeat, and it seems to be sort of it is glitching, it's definitely a glitch. What do you mean, consume? The, the nail is quite deep in this. Uh, all right, Sam feels pretty guilty now, so he's gonna <laughs> pull the nail out. Do we get the little spurt of blood? Um, <clears throat> how, are you, how are you going about this, Sam? Are you, are you, are you attempting to do this gently? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> then, if that's the case, yeah. um, I'd say make a strength roll. Okay. Okay. I'm not going to be cruel to you immediately. I'm going to make a, make a strength roll with advantage. What would you like? Because when he's holding it down, and you're going to have to, you've removed nails as well. So if there's any, I've got um, mechanical repair. Yep. Fixing broken machines. Yeah, I'll allow that. Uh, I don't think industrial equipment would no, be. No, no. I'll allow a mechanical repair if you had the mechanical. Yeah, okay. right. So, so what number do you have to get? All right, Jamie, let me figure this out. So, what do we say? Strength. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's still lodged in the head, but you're trying to sort of like. Right. So forty-nine. And he said it was with advantage, yeah? Mm-hmm. So first roll is 16. And second roll is 56. So we'll take the 16. Okay. Please, Bob. 
there is a, there's a slight sort of squeaking noise bit as you're mm. sort of removing this from the, the metal and certainly when you pull it out there is a like it doesn't spur outwards but immediately the hole in the tablecloth mm. begins like like this 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 creamy android mm. blood there's no nicer way to describe android blood there's no way the patch kit would repair the android is, is there um, you would know that patch kits aren't really for Android. Yeah, therefore, okay. and uh, <clears throat> in terms of like just mechanics for the for the players, um, there it's vac suits, but I'll also allow them like if you had like different sort of types of armor and stuff, it is literally you're you're patching mm. whatever you've got to, back okay. together. So it's not it's I, I'm not saying it's only space suits. You you would be able to use it on something else. Okay. Would um, a set of electronic tools include something like a little auto solder in space? <laughs> are you? Um... I brought my electronic tools with me. Brought, I don't yeah. know what they are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've got my toolbox in there. Well, uh, electronic tools, as it says in the the player's manual, um, it's a full set of tools for doing detailed repair or construction work on electronics. So. <clears throat> Are you going to take the cloth off this thing? Because right now you can't see it. I mean, the, I mean a the, one nail in the head is not going to kill an android. No, it's no, it's not, yeah. and, and it's not. How, how just, much is it moving? It's still sort of twitching a little at bit at the moment. Yeah. For the dock, it's more like a, a, a twitch, like a, like a nerve sort of spasm, if you know what I mean. But um, but to I, see I'll, it from an android is fairly disconcerting. In fact. Oh, ah. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, this whole situation, and this is something in the in the the joy and the adventure of last week's session, which was um, which was brilliant. Um, I may have neglected to get people to roll some some sanity saves and some fear saves because there was a lot of stuff going on. I'm not <laughs> going to get them to roll fear, fear saves and stuff now, but it's something that I may be on a bit more. Um, now you have three saves, I believe, don't you? You have um, sanity, fear, and body. <clears throat> Make a, a fear save, um, all three of you. Um, will my military training help me? I will allow that. I'm feeling quite chill. I will. I will allow that. What about surgery? I will even allow that, Doc. Because you've seen you've seen some horrible yes. things as well, so it's like literally the movie. I mean, it's still a fail, but yes. Uh, I've I've rolled a ten yes. and oh. a zero. <clears throat> so is that ten? That's... Or is that ten? Was that hundred? Yeah. <laughs> no, I always forget this. All the zeros <laughs> are zero in this game. Yes, yeah, so there's a zero on the d ten, and then a ten on the d. Oh, so, it's, oh, so that's yeah. ten. So that's ten. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, so you're fine. Uh, the doc, you take a point of stress. Wendy, how yeah. did you do? I got thirty-seven against uh, forty-two. Nice. So I succeeded. Yeah. So doc, it's still disconcerting. Um, maybe if this was a human, you'd be a bit more used to it. But it's still, especially after what happened to Dick Sloan I'm, and stuff. I'm going to stand up, let it go, and just step back and sit down at the nearest dining room table on one of the chairs and just. Yeah, and just take a moment, take a breath. Yeah. Take a drink. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy, should we try and fix him up? Well, let's maybe Klaus, why why is the chef a danger? In what way is he a danger to us, to the passengers? Are you keeping Klaus down on the floor at this moment? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um the movement sort of stop. It's sort of Shifting for a bit and then stops. It's almost like you hear something go. Brrr. Odor was malfunctioning. The security detail was sent to deal with him. Something happened. We were informed to lock the doors. And then. Odor was malfunctioning. Security was sent to de deal with him. He starts sort of repeating himself. <laughs> <clears throat> but he stopped moving, he stopped twitching so much, it's almost like 
He's a bit more level headed at this moment in time. Meanwhile, in the kitchen, <laughs> in the galley, Blaze Kelvin <clears throat> has just looted a, a corpse of a security guard. Just so I know as well, um, and we, I don't know if any of you have picked up yet, before the, the doors leading into the galley, there's the security card with Denny's name on it. Did any of you pick that up? Yeah, Blaze. Blaze. Yeah, I thought up, Blaze. I think, Blaze yeah. picked that up. I think he's. You've got the security clearance yeah, card, yeah. don't you? Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, you can tell that. Like, I mean, this body's been dead for a few weeks now, but it's definitely you can you know what did him in, and mm-hmm. looking at everything around, the android clearly did it. And you're there. There is android blood everywhere. Blaze Calvin, for everyone wondering, is in a full dress uniform. <laughs> <laughs> I want to point that out. Ship. He went to a fancy ship and took his his Marines dress uniform with him. He's out to impress. And now he's probably covered in a bit of human blood and a lot of actual blood at the same time. Um, so you've got the, you've got Danny's wallet and you've got this, this strange photo Well, the, the, of the team sort of together. You don't know. But it's very quiet. And you can see in the where the kitchen is, there is a door... Leading to somewhere that says storage, I believe, next to the kitchen. Mm. Yes. Can we have? Can we have the map? There's a food a food storage. Have you got a map with you, Gav? I've got, I haven't got one in Roll Twenty, but I can show no. the people at home. God damn it! <laughs> Hang on. Hang where's, on. Hang on. Where's, which one is it? It's the guest deck. I didn't. I didn't open it. Where is it? Mm. So, uh, but I, I will. I will describe it to you, Gav. As you're sort of Thank you. st- stood there. Um. There is this sort of where this dead um, uh, android is, right next to this fridge. Is it backed into this fridge? Its head just a complete mess and obliterated. Just to the right of that, there is a door leading outwards that says sort of exit, um, staff exit. And to the right of you, there is a door that says food storage. And both of them have uh, like a, a security card sort of clearance thing on it, like a swipe card section for you right before before anything can I uh, take out my spare revolver yep and distribute the ammunition you can indeed so I've yes got, I've yes. got four four in one and three in the other yes yes blaze took uh, a gun with him with yep. you had one bullet didn't you I think yeah I, yeah so you're topping that up just make a note of how many bullets you've got in each one. Oh, you're, hold, you're now holding two guns. Well, not not like John Woo. <laughs> yeah. Proper Italian uh... fat. Um, <laughs> but you, but in your inventory, you now have two pistols on you. You spent a few rounds on this android in the last campaign, so just make a note of how many bullets you you have. Uh, I had one round left, you had and then a full magazine, which is seven, and then one extra from my hidden pistol. So, so, so you're so you're, dispen- you're you're putting four in each, yeah. Which four will... in each, yeah. Four in each, yeah. Right, I just made a note of that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> right. Uh, put that pistol back away. Ugh. You poor son of a bitch, Denny. Uh, let's see if your card works, and um, let's go to the storage. Food storage, food and storage. You, you you swipe it, and it takes a. It, there's a brief moment where it goes before it goes green, and the door. It, it's the sound of a like almost like a, a fridge door being unlocked. There's a. It doesn't slide open. It's more so you'd have to sort of pull this one open, and you do, and what you do see, is a fairly deep um, food storage cupboard, which is filled with you haven't seen food like this. You may never have seen food like this. Great jumping Joe's of it. <laughs> there is, there is uh, certainly there's, there's the standard MRA sort of uh, the rations. You know, there's the freeze dried kind of stuff. But there are also meats ha- hung up. Somehow they've got like units that are preserving like fish and meats, and it's this is high tech equipment that's kept it, keeping all the the fruits and the vegetables completely fresh. So fresh. This isn't this isn't food that you get on a marine ship. This isn't a, this isn't a standard traveller sort of ship. You know, this is 
super top of the range food storage. Um, there's also th- things like uh, candy bars. There's boxes of candy bars, sweets, Ooh, all I kinds immediately of. Immediately dig in. There's caviar, <laughs> caviar. Well, what do you want to do? Uh, can- candy. I'll let you. Straight, I'll let you name candy. a futuristic candy bar or two. Um, mm, rocket pellets. <laughs> 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 and the packet is like a rocket flying through space and shitting out pellets that look like chocolate yeah. as a go. They're uh, a bit like nerds. Yeah, N- nerds cr- cross with poppets. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> is is there a, any stim pack or med medical stuff? Um, there is no sort of medical stuff in this in the food storage. I would say that if you go back to the kitchen, you would there is like an emergency kit. That has like Ooh, a med can kit. I, can I ransack that quickly? Yes, there, there's a med kit in there um, with two stim packs and some pain pills, as well as like a standard sort of med kit, the sort of thing that Doc's always got with him. Um, um, pain re- pills. Remember, you don't have lots of, like, you don't have a bag of holding um, or <laughs> anything like that. So you get, Just... you know, <laughs> it depends how much you're going to take with you. I mean, it's not like you're going to take a. Like a pig's carcass out, out of storage. And no, I've up. just taken uh, a bunch of sweets, put them in my pocket, okay. all my pockets, yeah. and then I, I take... Can I stow any of the stim packs on me? Uh, I mean, stim packs are... How big are they? The actual stim pack is sort of like... It's almost like a, te- like a solid test tube that goes into a gun. So there's almost like a gun, like an injection gun. So there's like two vials of it. And a small gun. Actually, actually, on this ship, it'd be more like a, like a pen, oh, like an epi pen, yeah, like an epi pen sort of thing. So you um, sort of pop right. the top out, put the stim pack out. So it's a little bit, it's a little bit. Them. Even though this is a med kit on in a kitchen, it seems to be nicer stuff than the, even the doc has. Well, I keep one of them for myself, mm-hmm. and uh, and and I go 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 and find the rest of the crew okay. with the stuff. With the pain pills uh, and the as you um, as you're walking through the kitchen, back back towards the double doors, there's a low rumble, and the rest of you sort of feel this at the same time. I sort of, and there's the sound of almost like metal bending mm, for a brief second. For a brief second, Blaze is the one that hears the the me- metallic sound. The rest of you just it's like a rumble. It's almost like space turbulence, but it's just sort of. We, I know we're not wearing our vac suits anymore. But presumably, we still have some kind of comm line mm-hmm. to the O'Brien. Mm-hmm. Yeah, come on, call the captain and say we, we just felt some kind of turbulence. Is there anything? And uh, as you're speaking, I mean, these aren't like big. You know, I imagine some sort of retro futuristic sort of comm unit. You can like a or original to... series flip phone. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like a cool space walkie-talkie. Um, <laughs> And you just hear, what? Oh, you're breaking up, Vince. What did they say? (laughs) (laughs) Acting. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Um, yeah, but you're not sure whether your message went out, but it doesn't seem like there's a clear. And it's a similar sound as you as you were entering this ship. There was a brief moment as you entered the Icarus when the captain was talking to you and she started to break up a little bit. But now you, you just can't hear her whatsoever. Starting to wonder if the communications are actually damaged on this ship. Right, well, as, as Blade, shit's gone sideways. Boom! Out of, out of the double doors. Just... <laughs> <laughs> He's probably got blood on his knees, human blood on his knees. He's got all blood all over his face. Doc, can you do anything with this? And uh, I chuck him the stim pack and the pain pills. Whether he's ready to catch them or not, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Some point, probably. No, nope. I think we need to find a way out of here. And Bla- Blaze, you look, you look down now, and there is a figure wrapped in a sheet that Wendy has like her knee on, and Zam ha- is stood over them with a nail gun at the same time. Good gun. Get my gun. Whoa, 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 whoa
This is the barman. Right? Klaus. He's an android, isn't he? He seems to be helping us. Can I get you something to drink? See? Is he, is he wrapped up on the floor? <laughs> okay. How's he helping you from there? <laughs> Make a sanity save, Blaze. Purely because you just had an interaction with an android that tried to kill you and now, <laughs> now they're holding down one. Hmm. Eight. You're, you're good. I've had some sweets. He's oh, in the zone. Good. Yeah. <laughs> So, I think you just met the chef. When I say met, I mean, you know, eviscerated with weapons. Yeah. And Klaus, here, tells us that the chef became dangerous and security was sent in. Yeah. That was that buddy on the floor. Denny. There. I found this on him. I hand over the photograph to the, Wendy. The, the wallet or just a photo? Ah, the whole thing. Okay. He hands over the wallet. Which well, sure, doesn't have too much in it. You know, it's got some old, old tut that you would find it in a sort of... In a spacer sort of wallet. But you do find the photo that has this group of... You immediately recognise it as well, Wendy, as the sort of, like, posse that are at the bar. Um, now... One of them has a tattoo on their arm. That of like a like a Viking like hammer with snakes wrapping towards it near the top. Did Wendy see that? Has she seen that once before? It's a couple of sessions now. So. Yeah, well. No, she wouldn't have. She wouldn't no. have. Because Wendy was com- at a dis. She, she, the coffee cup. Yeah, yeah. Moment. Would have gone in the front, and that, yeah. yeah, and it was around the book. Yeah, so she. So that would have been. So there's no recognition. Yeah. No. I love my players because they don't really meta game as well. So that's why we can be so <laughs> honest with each other. <laughs> <laughs> she hands the wallet and everything around to everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll allow that. Um, Sam, yeah, I think Sam will take a look at it and see it, and then just pass it to the doc and just see. Doc, what'd you make of that? Doc recognises it. Mm. Doc. We saw this. Didn't we? Yeah. This was on the station. It's a little shit that tried to kill us. It wasn't attached to a person then. Back on Echo. Yeah. What the hell is this photo doing here? Is, right, come on, we're getting off of here. Is the android um, Klaus? Is he still wrapped in the? He's still wrapped. The... Yeah, yeah. He, he stopped twitching so much. He's oddly still. That's... Can we take the tablecloth off his face? <clears throat> sure. And unwrap the tablecloth, and you can see that, like, Help him up. yeah. Not only does he have a puncture wound in the top of his his head, the other side there is like part of the skin is torn, uh, if we remember correctly. Zam threw a bottle at him as well. Uh, <laughs> um, um, sorry, he, he stink. He he, he rink, reeks of booze as well. There's a sort of a and the weird Zam or the <laughs> both. <laughs> both. <laughs> <laughs> As like as the eyes unblinking sort of stare up at you. Hold out the photo, point at the one with the tattoo, and say, "Do you know who this is?" And Klaus, who's still laid down on the ground, sort of looks at the photo. Yes, that is that is our security detail on board the ship. Who's the guy with the tattoo, Klaus? Does Klaus know? Let's make a. Do you want to roll? It's a pure luck roll. Uh, 
and uh, the eyes sort of focus. You can hear, you can hear like mechanics of like eyes oh, just focusing. Um, look. That is Jonesy. Which Did one? Jonesy leave the ship? No, Jonesy is still on board. As Where? is it, as is everyone. Where are they now, Klaus? He's just sort of looking around at this empty dining hall. I I do not understand that the passengers they they were ill. They left in unison. I saw saw security enter the kitchen. Heard screams. Attempted to contact more security. Security. My operating system consume began to mal malfunction. So I went into s into into sleep mode. And you see his eyes are sort of darting around like he doesn't quite know where he is. It's almost like someone's just woken up after being knocked out. Did you say your operating system <clears throat> is called consume? No, sir. Why do you say that? What's consume, Klaus? Do you hear it too? Yeah, I can hear it. Well, what what do you think it is? It's the it's the voice that that wants us all. Where do you think it's coming from, Klaus? It is a malfunction in my operating system. We must contact for help. People need to be served aboard this ship. Where's your operating system coming from? It is in my head. There is... There are terminals on the bridge of the ship. An android maintenance but can you get us there I do not know why does my head hurt uh, it's probably my fault <laughs> <laughs> I apologize sir did I upset you in any way way yeah, it's my fault, class. It's my fault. Don't you worry about it. May I sit up? Yeah, sure, sure. Me. Like the Undertaker. <laughs> 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 I rest my hand on my pistol. Ace, hey, could you uh could you lock the galley doors? See what I can do. Uh, can I lock them? Yeah, you can certainly go about like, and you can see like there are there were tables and stuff being, the doors opened outwards because, so you can barricade this up if you want to shut that door, or there is a, there is a terminal with a key card on it, but you don't know how to use it, so you want you'd need to. Yeah, I just barricade it. Yeah, barricade brute it. force in it. Yeah. So while he's moving furniture. <laughs> There you go, Klaus. Look, doors are locked. Odor should be um, shut down. Security needs to be notified. Yeah, we've handled that. Though you don't need to worry about that. You completed your mission. Good job. I have no mission, sir. My only purpose is to serve the passengers on board this ship. Now, yeah, well, are you going to? Would you like to see the wine list? No, thanks. <laughs> Uh, 
And he's just sat there for a bit, sort of staring around. Now, so how long had you been out here before the consume started? Our journey began I do not know what day it is we uh, the passengers fell ill more frequently after the jump Oda was upset. Maybe it was his cuisine that had hurt people. But even so, a murderous rage is somewhat of an exaggeration in a reaction. You got that right. I second that. My, my memory is... hazy I can become I can hear there is I hear static constant static perhaps so can I you shut I yourself be... down yes I can be shut down would you like me I to shut you... would you like me to yes Klaus I think you've done enough uh, just one thing though you said uh he said everything happened after the jump. Is this the uh, the new jump drive that you got? Yes, this ship is fitted with the latest top of the range hyper jump drive. State of the art. Okay. Is that what we came to repair? Well, that's what we came to uh, obtain. Are there um, any more? Are there any more of you on board, Klaus? Do you know? <laughs> this is just counting. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. How many enemies will we? Have? <clears throat> He's right after fingers. That's yeah. <laughs> this ship had a complement of fifteen synthetics on board, majority of which were engineer droids. Can you, through the magic of computers, figure out how many of them are still there? I can attempt like... to see if there's a connection on the mainframe. Will they that sounds know... perfect. I mean, the mainframe sounds exactly Will they know that after. you're doing this? We are all part of the same crew. That's not an answer, though, is it? They will see. I'm starting to get nervous. They should not. What would you like to know? Where they are? Just if they're still functioning. Certainly. Would you like me not to shut down? Don't. We'll do the shutdown thing in a minute. But just—he <laughs> immediately stands up quickly, and like the blood pouring out of his head, and he begins moving out of the dining hall. Uh, <laughs> he's wa- he's, just, he's walking out. I will need an access terminal. Okay, class, class, class. Wait. Can I get you some nuts? Yes. Certainly. And he turns and begins walking back towards the bar across the dining hall. Vince, can I... I think through all this, the doc will have been trying to... He's wondering where the passengers have gone, and he knows he recognised a name on the list, but he couldn't work out why. <clears throat> I feel like I'd try and figure it out again at this point, knowing yeah. that yeah. something's happened. Yeah, yeah. Um, this will be... This will be a, uh, an intelligence check with advantage. Okay. Um, this, because of the situation, this will incur a stress check. I don't think I... It, 
I don't think I did it last time, but because of the nature of the situation, um, if you fail, you will get stressed, but you do have advantage on the roll. Uh, 12 for success. <clears throat> the more you're thinking about the names on that fascia list, and you think about uh, Sarah Madigan, I believe it was? Yep. Is the name. She is a very, very close friend of your daughter's. And certainly one of her best friends. And certainly someone that has had contact with her. Would have had contact with her. Fairly recently. We need to find out what happened to the crew and the passengers. I'm not leaving this ship without finding that out. I don't want to worry anybody, but uh, we haven't looked in the restroom yet. <laughs> <laughs> I give it five minutes. <laughs> That's not what I'm afraid of finding in there. <laughs> Let's maybe just get Klaus settled back where we found him. Yeah, I know, but I don't want no surprises coming out of there. He's heading, he sort of flipped up the bar and he's moving behind and sort of... Klaus, while you're getting the nuts... Um... Are you walking all the way over to the bar? Yeah, 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 I'm yeah, going yeah. with, yeah. just to kind of stop yeah. him from running anywhere else. Um, please, please, when did you a look in the restroom. <laughs> when did you last... Um... Communicate with with the captain. The cap or one of the senior officers. The captain is the one who alerted that. The captain. The captain is the one who instructed the passengers to head back to their quarters. Okay. For their own safety, if they were unwell. Okay. Yes. Shortly afterwards was when I entered sleep mode. Okay. Can you hear them? Can you hear them? It wants us. But it cannot consume us. Okay. Would you like to see that run? Shh, Klaus, now. Would you sit down? And, and he smashes his head eyes. on the bar very yeah, hard um, and then he lifts oh, his head up okay. there's a big dent on the front of his head would you like um, to see the wine, wine list guys there's a, I'm, I'm, I'm having another android thing hey Klaus it's time to shut down now I'm in the toilet <laughs> <laughs> followed orders <laughs> I don't have rank you <laughs> <laughs> oh dear um, and you just see like the eye twitching Wendy is like certainly I will shut down now help help, help them can I have a quick look for the wine list <laughs> there's a wine list there <laughs> excellent <laughs> yeah I'll put it in my pocket it's, I mean, it's probably a book, isn't it? Yeah. It's probably a bit heavier, yeah. right? Uh, actually, it's probably more of a, like a, a holographic display sort of thing. You know, it's one of those. Yeah. Sci-fi. Oh, I, I was, I was going to say, if it was like one of those proper like posh wine lists, you might have some leather or leatherette. Yeah, yeah. Mm. The, le awesome. the leather stuff was around the the sort of oh, yeah. the holographic yeah. projector and stuff. Oh, like a so. holographic thing with yeah, lovely yeah. leather frame. Oh, I'm yeah. taking that. Lovely. <laughs> With, with with like even like it's got accents of brass and stuff like this. This thing looks magnificent. It's probably worth God knows how much on its own. 
Uh, Blaze, in the restroom, you find a restroom. Uh, open uh, fire. But, I, go to break. But, <laughs> I was I was looking at thinking, right, dining hall, lounge area, bar, galley, we've sort of uh, so, but, so restroom, I thought there's gonna be something in the restroom. But it is the lights are flickering somewhat. The, and even though it's flickering it's slightly creepy, but this is we've all been in a restaurant where all of a sudden they're like you're like, My god, they've got soap and hand lotion. Um, it's a it's a super super sort of flashy place, just as opulent I, I as could everything else. Try and get some of the goo off of my ah, ruined dress. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was going to check with Wendy to see if we're going to get some Dutch courage from behind the bar to take with us. Yeah, it's all there. Like? It's all there. There's loads of bottles. I love this. They've got on board and they're taking chocolates and, <laughs> and booze. <laughs> Duty free, mate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're here to shop. Um, um, do you want, um, Zam, do you want to choose something or shall we just part luck? Uh, let's part luck in. Okay. Um, Wendy closes her eyes, spins around three times and just goes and points at a bottle and grabs it. Off Any herself. bottle you pick is mm-hmm. the most expensive bottle of booze that you could never ever afford. This, this, These are... Bourbon, bourbons and whiskies that are aged for God knows how long. Top of the range vodka, because this is everything. Hang on, I just going <laughs> and have a swig. <laughs> You've already Tiny had shots. Stand. You've already. <laughs> yeah, we had a gonna take a swig as well. <laughs> Hand it to the doc. <laughs> Oh, we no, had a good carpet no, thank you. and quality booze. It's been eighteen months. That's of true. Lifting and shifting crap. That's true. Blaze, yeah, uh, it, it, there's a couple of minutes while you're going through the booze that Blaze comes out. He's a little bit cleaner. He's still a little bit tired. He <laughs> just smells of awesome hand lotion. <laughs> hey! Product. They've got soap and lotion. <laughs> <laughs> and buttery smooth. <laughs> What's the doc because doing? Buttery while, and smooth. Do you want some of this? <laughs> while Zam and Wendy are just sort of like, they're. <laughs> Pretty much just looting the bar. The doc is just <laughs> sitting there thinking. He's clearly distracted. Mm. Um, just sort of sitting with himself. Is he still in the, the same moment. place that was near that sort of doorway? Yeah. yeah. Hey, come and on, I, I... this is good quality stuff. What's up, doc? <laughs> uh, and you clearly, occasionally, doc, you look at that that blood trail that was leading into the galley, and the whole thing is just. Not feeling good. Now look at, down at the blood on my trousers as well. <laughs> and... yep. We need to find the crew. We need to get the parts to repair our ship. And then we need to go. Tell you, Doc, I'm a bit worried about stripping that hyperdrive if that's what's caused these issues. Maybe they'll have parts for a more an older model. No, we can check that out. Are we going to check out the guest quarters, see if anybody did make it back? I think that's a good start. We're going to go door to door. If that's what it takes. Now, Wendy, you better get another bottle. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So from the dining hall and the lounge area, where are you heading back into the main sort of thoroughfare of this this guest accommodation floor? Um, where are you, yeah. where would you like to head? I I think we do just head towards the guest quarters and okay. just start checking those out. Okay, so Wendy, yeah, Wendy, mm-hmm. take this. You got four shots. Make them count. I gotta give you the the revolver. <laughs> and okay. and Wendy left Thank her. You. you left your gun back on the ship, didn't you? So I did. Yeah. Um, um, Wendy does the thing that people do when they're very proficient with guns. Yeah, that's... Just... <laughs> yeah, does all that. Doc, and you notice it's... this? Yeah. You clock this. Adam's going to see it. He's just going to take another swig. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you head um, back 
through um, the main thoroughfare of this floor and uh, past the the wings of Icarus staircase which still continues upwards to the floor above you see two lifts there there's a VIP lift which is totally it has like a different sort of key card um, section and it looks to be completely locked um, you see the crew lift which is currently has a blinking light on it doesn't seem to be going anywhere um, and you do notice as you walk past that the crew lift is apparently on the top floor on the executive floor and the bridge it's sort of stuck there on the floor above um, you pass there are signs that say wellness spa gym entertainment entertainment lounge all of that good stuff and then you see like there's just quite like there's not loads and this isn't like a titanic there aren't thousands of rooms but there's quite a few rooms ahead of you and there's two sort of holographic screens and there's like plants there's actual living plants on this ship although they look like they haven't been watered they're not doing too well um, they're wilting a bit um, and as you're sort of um, walking through do you do you, uh, you've got doors on the right and you've got doors on the left there are five rooms on the left of you five rooms on the right and there's a couple more rooms at the end decent sized little rooms but do you just want to just go through how are you do how are you doing this how are you all we doing this? The, the, the the sort of corridor we're in though is clear we can see each other on either side yeah yeah okay i just suggest we take a side mm -hmm. each wendy you cover the duck lamb you with me okay do the um do the guest quarters doors have names on them or just numbers they're or? just they're just numbers just numbers mm -hmm. okay lead the way blaze all right i knock on the first door room service and then kick it down <laughs> can i kick it down you can't kick... I imagine it'd be like a sliding door yeah you can't you can't kick it down I still but, kick it but there is a key, there is a key card if you want to try and kick it open make us if you really want to try and kick it open make a strength check with disadvantage Cause... Wait, my but my military training. <laughs> Can I have that? Can I have a, I, a do you have, do you military have a... training that tells you don't kick down? Yeah, the yeah. Your military <laughs> training would be like, don't do this. Um, do you have athletics, or is that just Wendy? I do. I do have athletics. I'll allow athletics. You immediately, as you see, Sam immediately knock on the door and then <laughs> and then try kicking it. Yeah, ninety-two. So that's a fail. Yeah, for sure. You, God damn. you kick it as hard as you can, and there is a dent in it because Zam's a strong fella. But uh, it's blaze. not. It's uh, uh yeah, blaze. Presumably um, we hear that from the yeah, other side. Yeah. Well. And when you, hear, when you hear the clang, there's a there's a moment. It sort of echoes, and then you just hear another. We maybe take a softer approach. Yeah. Yeah, there's something about it, brute it, force it and ignorance over there. Do you want to go with uh, Blaze? Not yeah. really. No. <laughs> okay. Now, um, so Wendy's on. Wendy and Doc are on the other side. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are there, is there? There's presumably a little kind of key card thing. Yes. Yeah. Dibber, bobber, dibber. Yeah. I shout when I say a word that might be correct. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the rest, of, the, the rest of you don't, we have, don't have a card. You don't have a card. Are the doors locked? But Blaze, Blaze does. They have, they have a card slot. But none of you have cards, or do oh, you? Wait, wait. I put out Denny's card. So, uh, Wendy, are you trying to force the door open? No, I'm trying to screwdriver into the um, card reader. <laughs> to see if I can bust the the electrics. All right. Okay. Do not get a critical fail on this one. Um, <laughs> you are going to make me. I'm barefoot. I'm earthed. What? <laughs> what skill would you like to use? What? Convince me, Wendy. What you're going to do here? Um... As you see, Wendy pull out a screwdriver and she's about to just jam it into the card reader. Well, I, I guess it's not pure strength, is it? I'm trying to do something that involves a little bit of... Intellect and just trying intellect. to... Intellect. Mm. 
I'm wondering if my rim wise kind of I've just been around space a lot might be helpful. Probably not. Have you got like mechanic skills? Or... No. No, she hasn't. No, of course I haven't. <laughs> then you're just going to make an intellect roll. Straight. Straight. Mm -hmm. Okay, what could possibly go wrong? Five. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Against a twenty-seven. Nice. As <laughs> that is an amazing roll. Uh, as Blaze is searching around his pockets, Wendy just sort of finds a spot and just like that, and it just sort of like and you can see it's a sliding door, and you're opened up onto a. I used to, I used to um, hot wire speeders on Tatooine all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got that IP. <laughs> tattooing, tattooing. When tattooing. I was tattooing, yeah, when... um, I was on speed while I was tattooing. Um, That's not good. With a hot wire yeah. brush. Um, and you see, um, as this door opens up, and you see um, guest quarters, just a, a very lush guest quarters. There's like a double bed, there's a shower room. Still looks well made. Um, but there's no no sign of life in here. Is there there's... anything that would tell us whose room this was? Um, yeah, you can have a bit of a certain... They have no sort of perception or investigation checks. Um, so I'll just give you... This is the room of... Let's do a roll. Let's do a roll for a bit of fun. Uh, can I just quickly ask a question then? If we know that the screwdriver thing works, can we just use that to open all the doors? If you want to roll a check... Blaze has a card. Can I, can I try the card? Yeah. As the door sort of opens up behind you, Blaze, you try the card and it's all. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Of course, the door doesn't open smoothly because you kicked a massive dent into it. Um, so, but once again, it opens up and it's almost a mirrored kind of room, if you know what I mean. It's like, not a mirrored room, but the same sort of layout, very plush. Um, the room that Wendy and Doc find is the room of Gareth Strachan. Yes. You see you see you do see a wallet there and a nice a very nice watch. But no other sort of signs of life. Um I just leave straight away as soon as yeah. I know whose room it is. Yeah. Um <clears throat> Blaze in the room that you're in, that is um, the room of <laughs> Mara Park and Corvin Park. You know this because they even brought a photo of the happy sort of older couple. They look like a retirement Florida sort of couple, but one that has an awful lot of money. Um, but no bodies. But no bodies. There's no bodies, no nothing. No one. No one's. No one's there. And. And as you go through each of the rooms, once again you see different names. Um, and as such, I will send the <laughs> will send the crew the passenger list. And you see, a, a, occasionally you see like a, a photo or an ID card, you know, just a base or a credit card. There's some sort of signs of life, but there's no there's no one there. There's no blood. There's no bodies. There's no nothing. Um, apart from. You eventually, Doc, come into a room. And when you step into it... You do see... Um, there is a... Um, there's a few things set out on, on a side table. And th th these rooms also have like top range breakfast utensils, etc. Um, you see some, some earrings, some jewellery... And you see, like, when you you see a wallet, and when you open it up, you see the picture of Sarah Madigan, who's a fairly sort of she's fairly young. She's got like short blondish hair, short cropped blonde hair, with sort of dark sort of roots. She's smiling. She seems to be with her husband. You vaguely rem remember her husband. Who is Flint Mag Madigan, as you know, so that marries up on the thing. 
Um, but there's no, and you do see on on their side table, there is a pot of pain pills there. But there's no sign of her. Have or a, her husband. All of these guest rooms. Look, look at the um, the bottle of pills. Okay. Work out. <clears throat> are they, they like are, prescription they are, only? Or yeah, what, they are, are they just sort of generic? They're sort of high powered sort of travel sickness okay. um, kind of things. Um, you would know looking at this. These are for people that for which like cryo sleep and stuff like that it doesn't do well you know they don't space travel doesn't suit them too well and that was that was hers it's also her name is on it I take the the wallet with me mm-hmm. walk out of the room I guess mm. yeah in all of the like things that you find whether it be like you know watches there's a box of cigars you know imagine all these little trinkets I'll give you a list of bits and bobs. It's just scattered personal effects. There's nothing really. There, there's no money. It's not like someone had change because you don't need change on this, on this ship. Um, but a, apart from that, um, there's no sign of of any of the guests. Let's see which one of the rooms. So as you're heading down. As you get towards, there's these two vid screens on this corridor, and this show is it's showing like wonderful scenes of beauty and wonder, and and there's occasionally the occasional advert that pops in, but there's no spe- there's no speakers on it. You do notice that there's a there's a camera that's watching you, and it it follows you a bit. Um, and as you're walking towards, do we all notice that? I would say. Well, yeah, I would say yeah, because you're pretty switched on. I'd say you wouldn't need to have make a roll for it for this, and it does because the ship is so quiet. You would hear the this this thing as you're getting closer towards what you presume is the front of the ship. The floor gets a little bit softer. It's strange as you're heading towards the nose of the ship. Your feet—it's almost like Wendy once again it. It's not like you're on carpet, but the but what should be a metal floor begins to soften somewhat. It doesn't make any sense. But there's nothing on the floor. Nothing on the floor. No floor covering. I think I I kind of it feels a bit weird because I'm barefoot. So yeah. Mm. Oh yeah. For you, make a uh, sanity save, Wendy, because you're because <laughs> you're barefoot. Yay. But does it look like metal? Or... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the blues are doing it today. Um, that's an eleven <laughs> against a twenty. So you're you're an eleven, which is a critical success. Mm-hmm. So you are lasered in, and because you don't have the, it's so strange. Like you're feeling the texture of this metal floor, which should be cold, hard steel, but there's a certain patch of it towards the bottom. Not only does it feel softer there's a good amount of heat coming from it and you can feel it but it's not it's not constant heat it's like the heat of like imagine someone breathing on the back of your neck it's like a and then it gets a little bit colder and it heats up once again um as you get to the last, largest room at the end of this corridor. You'll get him, Blaze. <laughs> <laughs> so you've all sort of married up. Apart from finding nothing of any real signs of life. And the further you go on, the creepier this is. There should be a ship full of people. There should be there should be something. There should be some sort of signs of scuffle. There's nothing. With the beds made um, a couple of them weren't some of them were but a couple of them weren't really. what? but they don't look like nothing's really there that seems like there's struggles or anything like that mm. um, and you and you, feet, you, you uh, reach the final set of doors 
at the front of the ship. The rest of you begin to feel it. The temperature increase a little bit. Wendy felt it first, but the rest of you notice that the temperature changes a little bit. The mirrors are getting warm in here. Yeah, I don't like this. I don't like the way this floor is looking soft and. Can can I stamp on the floor? <laughs> you can. <laughs> Blaze immediately. Thanks. And what should be a <laughs> boom? There should be, it should make that sound. It should reverberate. It is more of a. It's like a thud of flesh hitting flesh. It's like, and it's you do it again, and then the weirdest thing happens. The floor goes. Did anybody else feel that? Oh yeah. Everyone make yeah. a sanity save. Oh god, I'm not going to save another one. Oh please. Oh. It's a point of stress. Wendy, I'll give you advantage on this because you got a critical success on the last one, so you can roll again. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got a 67. So Zam fails? Yep. 91. <laughs> Get that stress back Dr. up. Dr. Forrest? Just succeeded on a 51. 51. <laughs> and Wendy? So the good roll was a 21, which is a fail against a 20. <laughs> the other roll was a 33. <laughs> so thank you for the advantage. <laughs> oh. Everyone take a point of stress apart from the dock. As that sort of, as that rises and lowers before like, you hear like, and the floor solidifies once again. What, like proper metal? Hmm. More stamping. <laughs> doom, doom, doom. No, now, now it feels like a ship. Only the dock. The rest of you are like, did that, did that happen? That's weird, because even the, the heat has decreased a little bit. The dock is the only one that is aware that that just happened and it's not happening now. But he's a bit distracted at the moment, yeah, so he doesn't. So, so, yeah, he doesn't say anything. Yeah. As the as the large double doors for the big guest room, guest quarters at the end of the the regular passenger floor is ahead of you. Uh, I, I I'm going first. Okay. Gun presented. Bloop. I'm also. Yeah. And they sort of marry up on either side of these doors as, as then, like, Blaze just swipes the card and the doors... And we'll find out what happens after the break. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take a five-minute break while my players are thinking, what the hell is going on? Hey, everybody. Vince here. Game Warden and General Mischief Maker when it comes to the Safe Space Show. Just wanted to say, we hope you're enjoying the show so far. And if you want to find out more about the other podcasts and general news that we have on the, this network, then why don't you follow us on social media? On Twitter, we're at LawbreakerPod. And you can follow us on Instagram at Lawbreaker Radio. Just to be clear, that's L O R E, Breaker Radio. But follow us there. We'll be sure to follow back and interact with the community and let you know a bit more about what's upcoming on the Lawbreaker Radio Network. But uh, I think without further ado, enough of me. Let's get back to the show. And welcome back. So, the crew of the O'Brien stood at the end of the guest deck in front of the double doors and they have just opened the large guest quarters as the doors open up and it's dark in this room torches out people <laughs> <laughs> what you saw in some of the other guest rooms were windows 
every guest has a wonderful view of the the majesty of space and everything that they see. You can't see the windows in this one. It's just, but when you get the the torches up, and you light them, and you do see, it's another wonderful room. No sign of life. Um, you do notice something that's on the side table. Doc, you noticed this. It's a small inhaler. Um, but you would immediately recognise this. That this is no normal inhaler. This is a particular type of drug. A recreational drug. Very expensive. And it's one called Chill. And it's... Uh, but you, you just see the inhaler on, on the side. That's what, that's all you notice. And as you, uh, you're you scanning around with your little torches... You've all got small torches, I believe, haven't you? Well, you would have. Um, this is a slightly bigger guest room, but still... Same, same layout. On the side of one of the beds... This bed is slightly messy. Slightly... Slightly unmade. And there's sort of... There's a look as if someone has had a fever in this bed. Doc, you immediately recognise this. And anyone who's been unwell has know, <laughs> knows like when your sheets are soaked in sweat. And it's all messed up. And there seems to be an old, dried up pile of vomit by the side of the bed. Did you notice this? As you're looking up to where the windows are, you can see the window frames. But you can't see space outside it. There's just a dark mass covering it. And it's hard to really tell what it is. At this distance from where you are in the room looking around, the windows are covered with something dark. Can we work out whose quarters this was? Th these quarters will be the quarters of yes this will uh, Achel Castillon or Achel Castillon and Jasper Hyden Jasper what sorry Hyden uh, Doc you would be um the name Hyden rings a bell in, in some way in some of the circles that you may have run on in the past. Clearly someone with money, so it doesn't surprise you. This sort of person. It's a name you heard somewhere at a yeah. party or something, but no. No one that you know, personally. But And whatever's blocking the view of space, is that something that's inside the window, or is it... Outside. outside. Zam, what could do this? How close are you at the moment? Well, if, if he's asking, we'll move closer to the window. What you see, <clears throat> if you shine a torch on it, I, which I, I presume you are, so you can get a yeah. mm -hmm. sense of it, <clears throat> it is a strange formation. It almost looks like rock. Like metallic rock in some ways. It's really strange. And when you shine your light, there's a certain reflective quality to it, like a like a sparkle like a like a geode, there's a certain sparkle to it. That dulls. But then at one point it's it sort of soak up soaks up the light of your torch. But it's not like the oozy And then you see it stuff that we saw on the satellite relay. And then you see it something move within it. Oh. <laughs> Before spoke too soon. Yeah. a face, a human oh. face, a, oh. a part of a face just boom, hits the door, and you can only see like that that much of it, and it looks like it's partially digested. There is a, <laughs> you can see the eye socket is is gone. I need you all to make a fear save. <laughs> yes, it's the boat on Jaws. <laughs> ben Gardner's boat. Yeah. 
29. And it still fucks success. me up now. Success. Oh, thank God for that. 27. Okay. Uh, 42 failure. Okay. 10 success. <clears throat> Doc, know, good dice no, tonight. Steal. Doc, did everyone succeed except Doc? Yeah. Or did, yeah. yeah. Doc, could you uh, make me a panic save? I assume I have to gain the stress first. Yeah, gain the stress and then roll on the panic table. Uh, I rolled a nine. I am currently at fourteen stress. Okay. Oh no. Yeah. You have a new condition. Oh, good. Just you, what I wanted. You are deflated, which makes <laughs> sense seeing that seeing what this thing is. Um, whenever a nearby crew member fails a save, you gain one stress. Right. Now. Oh, geez. Is there anything on your trauma response, Doc? Is there anything specifically? Uh, not for this, no. Okay. Um, mothership players out there, always pay attention to what your trauma response is should bad stuff happen, such as the, these sort of moments. Because sometimes they could mean something bad for other players, or they could they could give you advantage on stuff, all, all kinds of good stuff. But Doc, you step back, and you want to throw up yourself. You, you totally want to you know this is like and it sort of it moved for a moment i would say rather than it looking like it's in water it's more like um the wonderful creature effects that are in the remake of the blob it appears for a brief moment and then disappears like into it and then it looks like a geode again for a brief second and the doc is freak he's freaking out <laughs> as when you he's enter, rolling doc, it's- reasonably well would would the bits of face that we saw match up with any of the photos in wallets that we've that I've looked at in the last few minutes yes <laughs> yes I'm going to have a roll See I'll tell was. you Wendy's surname is Marple <laughs> 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 This looks like the face of Rex One. So that's Rex W A N. And you only saw like a good portion of his head, but there was there was a distinctive sort of mark around the eyebrow. The way the eyebrow was shaved a little bit, you recognise that face. I think we found the crew the uh, guests. We found one. Yes. Rex he was uh, security <laughs> detail, wasn't he? <laughs> oh, if I could give you Lizzie inspiration for that, I would. Was he security, was he? No, he's a passenger. Yeah. yeah. Blazer's got that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gav, being, Gav being so in his character that he's going to get all the details of everything wrong. Yeah. And, <laughs> but Gav knows what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Well, yeah, yeah. Is there is there anything else of interest in this guest quarters? No. The the signs that the doc notices before this happened, there was a notice of someone that was very ill in this room, but no other real signs of life. And in in these rooms, you have seen clothes. You know, they, it's not like the room is devoid of any. Someone was here. Is there? Has the doc got anything that can analyze the vomit to see whether there's anything in there to tell us? Is the doc in? Is the doc in any position to? No, I'll slap him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll give I'll give the uh, the doc a swig of the uh, the booze that we got. The doc turns it down. Mm. Doc, mm. come on! It's really good. Your eyes catch that inhaler again, doc, and you you feel your heart like in your chest, and uh, you do know. But this drug, chill. Was your eyes catch it on it? Catch on it again. This inhaler, chill. It's a fun little homebrew drug that I've made for this game. <laughs> if you take a hit from it, you can remove one d five stress. Oh. Now, however many stress you relieve. You get disadvantage on intelligence and speed rolls for exactly the same amount. Hmm. 
You see the, the warden book. gives, and the warden takes away. <laughs> <laughs> you see Dr. Forrest reach for the inhaler. His hand sort of shaking a little bit. And you guys don't know what feels... this is. This just looks like an inhaler. But... There's what feels like a really, really long pause. And then he slowly moves his hand back. Okay there, Doc. We should get going. Where to, Doc? Where would be the most secure area of the ship? Probably the bridge. We should head there. If anyone's still alive, that's... That's where they'll be. Have you managed to get through to the O'Brien yet? Car we'll relays again. up there as well, so we could uh, try and fix that. Get up to the bridge. We call the O'Brien from there. And see if anyone's uh, still alive on this godforsaken ship. All right, on the double. <laughs> Follow me. <laughs> Not fucking marching. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> Already, like halfway down the hallway. Yeah. yeah. Um, can I, as as we're going, can I go back into one of the rooms mm-hmm. and look out the side window to the side that we docked on in the O'Brien? Yes. And just check that she's still there. As you look out and you see it's still there. Okay. You can still see that the ship is still attached. Okay. But you know that your the the ship you're on is still moving. It's moving slowly, but remember the captain was like, "This thing's still moving. I'm going to have to keep along." So, that mm-hmm. the, yeah, but it's still there. The O'Brien is still there. Okay, I tell the others that you know, captain's still well, with us. You know, if we need to communicate in a different way, maybe we can. I was just going to ask. The doc didn't pick up the inhaler, no? Nope. I think as everybody's leaving, Zal will be the last to leave and he'll pick it up. Just <laughs> slip it in his pocket. Okay. Zam doesn't know what this is. <laughs> no, he doesn't know what it is. <laughs> but, but you did just, see the doc. It was something of interest. Yeah. He's just going to yeah, take it. Totally, just... totally. Makes perfect sense. <laughs> Zam and Wendy have got this whole kind of... Like... Kleptomania. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wanted to start leaking the guest quarters, but we moved through there really We quickly. went through quite quickly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mac well, I mean, we yeah, could, was, like... There were watches, there was jewelry. There, there was stuff. You know. I can give... If, if you're specifically saying, if there's anything of any worth, I will take it. Is that what you're saying? No, no, I no. Because if you are, I can send you lists. You know, this is literally like Mothership is a game of finding stuff, salvaging whatever might help, and clues, etc. It's a puzzle. It's a, it's a dungeon crawl. It's all okay, kinds of yeah, things. Yeah. If that's See what if you want to do, yeah. I will. I will send you a list of goodies that you pick up. Don't be surprised if there's some weird rich people <laughs> stuff in there. Because there's gonna be. <laughs> I, I would say the doc was very much on a mission. So it didn't. Yeah. No looting, no ransacking, just check, check, check. Yeah. Yeah. Bang. Okay. Okay, yeah, so I will well, do that. Whilst Blaze was like, you know, faffing about making sure that the room was secure, waving his gun around. I, yeah. I you picked up some up. valuables. You definitely picked just, up some valuables and stuff. So. Not like stealing, just anything that might be Well, if you're picking up someone's valuables from their hotel room, I think it's okay, stealing. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sam feels better now that... Room like, service! Yeah, Zam <laughs> feels better now that it seems like you know most of the guests seem to be attached to the front of the ship. So, you know. <laughs> they don't need it. Okay, so you're heading back um, to where you, are you heading back to the can staircase? I, you, can wait. I try the crew lift? You try the crew lift, and you hear a chum and it wants to move, but it seems to be stuck on the floor above. Like we can stairs. Can we prise the doors open just to have a look? Or... Damn it, Sam! Have you got a crowbar? I believe you. I think you might have a crowbar. Uh, I've got a toolkit. 
Um, let me see where my I would imagine. I would, I would imagine that you've got a crowbar. Yeah, they have a tiny there. crowbar. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to get you to make a strength check for it. It's fairly sort of... It does open up and you look up and you can see that the lift is there. Mm. Um, but it's just not... It just doesn't want to move at, at this moment in time. Also, the smell that's coming from down is revolting. Uh, what does it Make a like? body save. Does... Me make a body save, mm-hmm. yeah? Just him. Body, body, just, body. just him. Just him. If, just he, if he opened it up <laughs> there and we stuck, go. It, stuck his head in. Let's add some more biological waste to whatever's down there. <laughs> Damn. Yep. Did you pass gas? 71. 71? Yes. You throw yes, up. Yes, he did. Yeah. You, you immediately throw oh, up. Start I'm throwing up. sober up now. Yeah. That, oh, this whole God. this whole ship is waste. yeah, and when when you hear him thrown up, you get the waft of something awful and rotten oh. coming out of that left, lift shaft. He's currently still got his head. <laughs> oh. What are you doing? No, I'm going to retract my head from the. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you closing the doors back up? Yep. Okay. Up, up the stairs. Yeah, Sorry, take I'm, another I'm on point at this. At this take drive. another swig and like swill it around my mouth, like mouthwash. <laughs> <laughs> but mouthwash, you then go, mm. um, and you head up to the next floor, the control and executive deck of the ship, the VIP level of the Icarus. And what you see when you get up to this this one, this is more. Whereas it was the on the floor below, it was more open plan. When you get to the the top of this staircase, it seems to be more in quite a large room. But this is where the staircase ends, and you can see doors that say uh, VIP or or crew only. You know, there's certain like cards slots um, on either side, and it doesn't. You would imagine that the regular guests can only go one way and you have to be VIPs or crew to go past a certain point um, which direction are you heading as we look on the map there's the east and west we'll just treat it as the east and west the the doors to the um, the reclamation area the star pool do they have windows in them can they, we, could we see in that room they do they do and it's like um, almost extravagant portholes and stuff like everything is just imagine like bio, Bioshock meets in, Mass Effect on crack, <laughs> uh, um, and certainly you can see that there there is a massive open area between these double doors, and it's there seems to be a swimming pool there, and like a, a ledge leading upwards. You can't see the ceiling from from here. It's like you can see through these portholes and these almost some of it looks like it's stained glass on the sides brass and stained glass it's completely over the top is there anyone in there you look in there doesn't seem to be anyone in there okay and i just push open the door and just kind of look in and up you um pop your head in and look up and if there was a sweeping piece of orchestral music this is where it would kick in <laughs> <laughs> As you look up at this massive room, it extends up and it has a domed ceiling. But is it is built in a way that is completely see-through. It it almost looks like the stars are right there. You can just see your your eyes make out small, well, from this distance, small hexagonals. And you remember as you were approaching the ship, there was this large metallic dome at the back of the ship it's almost like an observatory where you are literally imagine poolside in space you are right next to space but in a, in a tropical resort it's that kind of area. it's quite something and it's all designed to be there is you and there is the universe clearly it's built to be secure and it takes a moment for you to go this is strange until you see the little details of what is there? It's 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 beautiful. It's it's 
like almost like a cathedral with a pool in it. <laughs> you can write that down. <laughs> it's giving me some ideas. <laughs> you see Wendy sort of leaning her head in. Are you rejoining the rest of them? Yeah. Right, are you all going? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can um, use the um, security card that, that Blaze has to go through the yellow doors on the map. Beep, 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 beep. Yeah. So you pass through. And you see some VIP rooms there. They are, there are key cards there. Um, Guns out, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I imagine, yeah. Nail, yeah. nail gun is out, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What is the doc doing at this moment in time? Just his mind is elsewhere. Yeah. Okay, and you you push forward. Um, you can see the the VIP suites all have like a red light above them. Where are you heading to now? Which way are you going? Let's let's paint a little picture. The, the bridge, I would say, is where we need to. Okay. Um, can we have a? look back quickly at the crew lift yeah to see what's stopping it um you can see the crew lift when you turn back you see the crew lift is open the doors are open and it almost looks like it's partially down a little bit like it's wanted to go down and it's stopped um but you can't see what's stopping it from here you do see a card on the Floor, another security card, but this in is the a, lift the, in, in the lift. Yeah. <laughs> that could be useful. I'll go. Yeah, go get. I'm going for the card. Be careful. Hang on. Before I do, I'm going to reach <laughs> into my pocket and give the doc. I've brought with me a little um, kind of mini, handmade, talisman of an octopus and, and I'm going to give it to the doc and just sort of say you hold on to this and it'll keep you safe what is this crafted out of Wendy random bits of toot <laughs> quiet <laughs> in the universe like bits of fabric bit, bits of post-it note mm. um, uh, you know Wendy I feel much better now <laughs> <laughs> I think um, Zam is just going to like Quietly turn to Blaze and just go, Oh, God, she's off with her octopus shit again. Yeah, she tried peddling that to me. Not into that kind of thing. It just worries me after what happened last time. Oh, I was asleep. Yeah, it's a good thing, too. <laughs> Say no more. <laughs> <laughs> Read it in the prequel comic. No, no, no. Um, <laughs> this is what you get for missing staff media. Yeah. And Wendy <laughs> leans in, and you can see like the, the lift oh, shudders God. a little bit as Wendy's. You can see the card there, and you can see it says "crew" on it. Just it doesn't have any name on it, but it just says "crew clearance." Okay. Same sort of thing. And you lean in, and you pick it up. Can he still smell the smell? It's not as strong here. Partially because it's being blocked. Mm. But there's a there's a vague smell of it. I'm just assuming it's the smell of Zam's vomit coming out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I Love backtrack it. reasonably yeah. quickly away from it. Okay. So Wendy has the crew card. And you're heading towards the bridge? Yeah. Um, from where the crew lift is, you can uh, take a one eighty and immediately see a door leading out towards the bridge, and you scan the crew card or the or the security card. The security card, either one could work. And the door opens up. Once again, there's no real sign of life. But as you wander through this bit, and you can see monitors, and this definitely, you're walking more into, like, the hub of where this, this ship is, the ship works. Um, 
you notice there is a little bit of blood on the floor. Not loads. There's just a few drops of blood here and there. And they're is sort it of leading anywhere. It is leading. Human? It is leading. It, it is human, and it is leading sort of the direction you came in. I'll bring up the the map for the audience as well. It is leading sort of away, sort of um, north. If you remember. there, there are two sort of entrances, so it's not heading back the way you came. It sort of heads heads around a little bit. Um, but there doesn't seem. There's only a few drops. It's not really any. No sign of struggle. Towards the navigation console, is it? It's towards... You're not yet in the bridge. Oh, we're not there. Yeah, right, you're in that so sort of corridor. So it's heading north. Kind of where... Yeah, passenger management and communication systems right, and, okay. and life support. Um, can I follow it? Yes. You can Please? You can go wherever you would like, Blaze, Blaze my dear. <laughs> I want to go home! <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing my job well. Um... <laughs> Where would you like to go? North. North. Um, it kind of veers off a little bit more towards the passenger management and observation systems. That room. Uh, I look look back to the crew. What do you think? I mean, it's it's a sign of life. Worth a look. <laughs> <laughs> Shh. the doors open up and you walk in and you see a room of monitors and computers and you know there are systems that, that should be monitoring like everything on the ship it's probably you can see a couple of them sort of flickering the security systems a little bit flickering Every almost every single one of these screens has been smashed violently with something and they're all Hello. smashed and cracked <laughs> and there's one screen that's slightly flickering in the top right hand corner and uh, it says that is in the VIP lounge it's flickering and on that screen there is someone just sat in a chair still as anything you can see the light from a bar that's just off the just off the camera's view and it sort of flickers somewhat and there's just someone just sat in a chair very still um i check the corners of this room yeah nothing there seem to be the blood led up to that screen and there is a bit more blood on the sort of like the console in front of you it's almost like this is where it started and the blood trail yeah. began to lead out. It's all clear. No one in here. But you might want to take a look at this. Take a look. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you see the same thing. You see it all smashed and you see that screen. Um, Who the hell is that? <clears throat> Why do you smash the monitors? No, he didn't do that. Can we zoom in to see who it is? There is like a sort of enlarge, a slight sort of roll of, roll of ball, yeah. and like there's a little bit of enlarging. You can do it, but it is static. Um, you can zoom in somewhat on it, um, but the picture is. It shouldn't be this janky. It shouldn't be so staticky. It shouldn't. You know, th this should be high quality cameras and stuff. There's something interfere. There's an interference humming. You know with the picture and you can just see this person sitting there you can see that from what you can tell though their their head is down they're wearing very expensive clothing and there is a big wound on the back of their head you can see blood it's human blood the, red blood yeah, yeah dark blood dark blood yeah. yeah he's probably dead like the security guy Let's, uh, let's finish checking this part of the ship and then we can head back there. Oh, goody. 
Yeah, that's a great <laughs> idea. Let's go find the dead guy. <laughs> are you are you heading in are you heading in that direction or are you heading to the bridge? Yeah, I think check the bridge first okay. while we're up here. Yeah. Bridge. Bridge. <laughs> you head towards the bridge and the door sort of doop. and it takes a while sort of ch- ch- before it sh- it's open and you can see there's a couple of things you see immediately obviously all of the all of the equipment is still in one piece um, and there are lights and there are monitors and you can see the large windows of this very impressive bridge. You have never seen anything like. You have never any. Maybe the Marines have possibly been on a military transport vessel, one of those huge ships. You know, this is where the superior officers would have been. Um, and as you're looking out this window, you can see something on the edges of the windows. It almost looks like vines. Like on the edge, like like a sort of like almost beginning to cover the windows. They're not moving; they're just sort of there. It's almost like roots or vines. Um. And uh, for this, I will everyone make a. God, what save? It's got. Be, it's got to be a save. Make a. No, oh, actually. No, I th- I think a uh, a fear save, fear save from everyone. He is terrible. I want sanity. <laughs> Doc, you can I, I, if you if you want to argue for that, I'll I'll allow you to argue for that. If you're trying to just figure out what's going on, can I have sanity as well? <laughs> to be honest, I've made it either way. So all ah, right, okay. <laughs> what do we get? Can I have sanity. <laughs> how how are you going to convince me, Zam, that a man who's been drinking, He's not afraid because he's got Dutch courage. He's got a buzz. <laughs> so, you know. All right. What's your sanity roll? Ah, oh, 34. Oh, sanity is 35. <laughs> <laughs> Doc, what did you get? I got seven. And if I'm going fear, that's 14. So Lovely. Uh, Wendy, what did you get? 16, which would have succeeded on either of them. Oh, these dice are so beautiful. Blaze, what did you get? Thirty-two out of forty on a fear save. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense that Blaze has gone for fear because he's sort of like um, he's already lost his. Mind. Yeah, and you know you're taking this in, and then you see that there's another figure in this room. Oh, they immediately point my gun at him, and they're they're in a chair, and the, the chair sort of turns around slowly. And you can see um, a female figure with sort of uh, reddish hair. She's got a fairly sort of pale kind of skin. Um, she's wearing a very smart sort of uniform of sort of um, greys, blues, silvers, with some accents of gold. You see a name badge on it that says Kel. And also, she has a wound in her side. Which you can clearly see is she's an android. It looks like something caught her in her side. She sat there. She turns around and looks at you and goes, Ah, oh, you've finally made it. I've been watching you. I was. Uh, are you here to fix the ship? We were the manner of speaking. We're here to help you with your communications issue. Uh, yes, I have been trying to message for help, but I did not know if my communications had gotten through. I have been... The captain instructed me to stay here. Where is your captain? I do not know. He he had fallen ill some time ago. He had uh, he had instructed all the passengers to uh, return to their rooms, uh, and then he was off to uh, trying to figure out what was going on. 
and the the rest of the bridge crew join him. I am I have been a uh, I have been here. And you can see her she's trying to piece together and she has very sort of pale blue eyes. She's trying to piece it in the eye her eyes are sort of darting around. Are you uh, hearing anything, Kel? Yes. I... I am... hearing strange voices. What are they saying, Cal? They, uh... I, I think I am malfunctioning. There is a... Uh, my head, it feels like it is full of static. It is making my role hard to execute you relax now Kel we're here to help Zam see if you can get working on the communications panel I can do Doc do you know where do you know where the others are we're working on that okay I'll start working on the communications panel what do you t- on the console? Um, you can see Zam when you go to work on this communication console. Doesn't look like it's been messed up. There's nothing really. As you um, you can roll a check if you want an intelligence check. Um, I don't know whether Zam would be the best for this, as it's more computers and diagnostics and stuff like that. Mm. What about mechanical repair? Um, you can have a look at that, yeah, if you want to roll a, a check. So to, which one to, is it? Intellect, yeah? Uh, yeah, intellect with mechanical repair. Right. See if so you can see if there's anything. 60 then, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, and I get a 90. A 90? Yep. This so ship... That's a point of stress, yeah? Yeah, a point of stress, and this yeah. ship is a mystery to you. This is... You immediately, like, when you pop open one of the panels... This is the highest grade stuff that you've never seen anything like this in your life. This yeah, is like this the is above it, my pay grade. I uh, I cannot seem to. The communications pass. I have been trying to send messages. How did you uh? How did you get here? If you, if it is not working. I think it is working. I think something else is blocking it. Uh, we were sent here because uh, contact was lost. I am. Um... The computer systems have been malfunctioning for weeks now. I, I am the navigator of this vessel, and I have not been able to control where it has been going for some time. We, I would have been able to avoid us making contact with that that satellite relay if I had known this is you visited Echo 237 is that the... I, I do visit is a is somewhat of a exaggeration it was in our way and we hit it head on I could not I could not I tried to uh, I tried to you can see it like she winces a bit, almost like she got a migraine, which is very strange to see a synthetic person. Well, it's her. it's okay. My my head. Just, did any of your security team board the satellite? What? No, no, no. The security team have been on this ship the whole time. The, the captain. No, he's a. We have not had anyone leave the ship since we left port. Kel, do you know who's in the VIP lounge at the moment? I, uh, I assume there should not be anyone. The captain told the passengers they had to return to their rooms. Even the the executives were told. I do not know 
No one should be there. Did anything attach itself to the ship after you hit the satellite? You see her trying to figure it out. No, I, um... This... Nothing attached from the satellite. I, um... I tried to uh, maneuver, but it was not working, and... This... These have... I do not know what this is. And she's pointing to the window where you can see the the vines hanging up. So rather than it attaching, maybe you deposited it on the satellite. Deposited what? What are you... Uh, I am confused. What happens I am, when you I am, out of I am, I am, I am... Cal. <sighs> Come back maybe to us, should, Cal. Should we let her sleep? No, I, I have, I have duties to perform. The captain. Are the passengers in danger? Yes. What happened to the jump drive, Cal? The, the drive, the drive was working perfectly. We, uh, we activated the jump drive, and as everything was scheduled to go, it was. We have. I have seen no spike. Wait. There was. There was a power surge. Power surge shortly after. Are the passengers safe? And you see, like, a, a, a bit of android fluid begins to leak from her eyes. That's what we're trying to figure out. What kind of power surge was it? I, I could not ascertain. Some of the engineers were sent to investigate. I presume that they have fixed the problem. We have not heard from them since. These are the android engineers, yeah? Yes, we have a mixture of android and human technicians aboard, but the majority of those that work with the more dangerous aspects of this vessel are indeed synthetic. Okay. If the passengers are in danger, we have to... And she tries to stand up. Yeah, hey, calm down, help. Cal. Calm down. We will help the passengers. I think the best thing you can do right now is shut down. I'm, I cannot shut down, sir. Not, a, not unless the captain orders me. I am the only one still on board the bridge. I do not know where my crewmates have gone. Can you give us access to the VIP areas of the ship? Yeah, yes, I should be able to... And she sort of... She taps on some keys in front of her. And you'll see like... Meh, 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 meh. No, that's... That's incorrect. It, it should allow me to... It let me on... I was the one that allowed you access to the vessel. I... I do not understand. It is not allowing me to... Wait. And she, she stands up and she heads over to like a, a small box on the side of the bridge. And you can see like android blood is just pouring from her side. But that doesn't look like it's bothering her. <laughs> She's not holding her side. It's like the head that's like... And she heads over to this case and she opens it. And you do... She, sort of, um, she taps in a couple of numbers and then opens it. And you can see in this case it is an emergency kit. You see a couple of pistols, you see a couple of stem, stem packs, you see a, a med kit. Um, but she pulls out like I'd like a couple of cards. Um, that we have these cards, but I can, I can also show you. And she holds up a palm, and you can see, in her palm is the same sort of chip that you have seen on the cards. The androids have them in their hands, which I believe I'm not sure if. Blaze, did Blaze see something like that on one of the other androids? I'm not sure if you've seen it on another android yet. No, I don't think no. so. No, no. no. I think so. If, if he did, he doesn't remember. Yeah, yeah. So the, the androids no, don't I have don't cards. I don't think we saw that. Yeah, yeah. 
But when she lifts up her hand, you can see it's a similar sort of chip. Would you like me I to think, show you? I think we should check the captain's quarters. Yes, yeah. With the um, with the med pack have bandages in it. Yes, it's a medical medical kit, which yeah, in the player's handbook. I don't know why I shut my eyebrows like that, like it was saucy. Mm -hmm. It's just a straight up. <laughs> oh yes. Oh, look at this Ooh, medical kit. Oh um, no, this is gauze. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it would have bandages. Um, there are some, I... there are some pain pills in the in the. Box yeah, as well. right. no, I'm just wondering whether we can like rudimentarily bandage up the wound that Cal's got. Yeah, stop her leaking everywhere. <laughs> I'll, I'll bandage her up, yeah. Yeah. And you can. She sits down and lets you sort of bandage, bandage her up. And she's. What is happening? And she looks at you, Wendy, like dead in the eyes for, for a brief moment. She goes. I'm scared. It's okay. You'll I... you'll be okay. Um. Oh, I was just gonna say, can we take the pistols and the? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> she, she, yeah she went to the kit and she came back with like two cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, she left the rest of the stuff. So while you're seeing, Doc's patching her up. Yeah. While she's distracted with that, we'll take the... Yeah, uh, yeah just subtly. <laughs> I, I don't know whether to give the pistols to Blazon, Wendy. Yeah, what you, what you have there... Oh, we can then totally John Woo it. These are just... Mm -hmm. they, are, they are two pistols, <laughs> um, each have uh, six rounds in them, so it's just one clip. Okay. There's two stim, stim packs and pain pills... And uh, medical kit like bandages and stuff, which yeah, I presume so... is, is is what the doc has ripped open and is just using, you know. Yeah. So if Zam's going to divvy it out, the two pistols will go to Wendy and Blaze, mm -hmm. and anything medical will yeah. go to the doc. Then, as Doc's sort of working on Cal, she sort of looks down at you, Doctor, and she looks confused. I, I do not understand. Are you a? I am not human. Why are you? fixing me you're still bleeding in your own way but I do not have nerve centers or blood as you do this is no but I assume if you run out of this stuff it's bad yes you are correct thank you are you a doctor? Yes. Perhaps you can help the passengers and the captain if they are unwell. I would like that very much. Good. Would you like me to take you to the captain's quarters? Please. Please, follow me. And she stands up and then she pauses for a moment. Oh, God, I can hear it. I take a step back. Mm, gone. And she looks at you confused. What are you, what are you doing? I'm, I'm just going to take you to the captain. I, can, you, can you hear that? I am... I think I am malfunctioning. But I shall take you to the captain and then... And the captain can tell you to rest and you can rest. Yes, I, I, I think my operating system has been badly damaged. This, this, this way, she... Can I ask a question? You can. Is there anything on the communica communications console that suggests that there's a signal... Like being broadcast, or there is. Hmm, what does Zam know this? How much does Zam know about communication technology? Um, and stuff? Personally or professionally? If, I mean, I mean, yeah. while, while, the, while the doc's doing this, then you could all have a look at this. So there's a good chance that you would see like it seems to be working. 
I got mechanical repair. But there's a certain sense of. But the rest of it's all I would, industrial I, I equipment. Would, I would yeah. think the three of you would know that there's a certain there's an interference. There seems to be an interference. So is there any way that we can jam it or? Uh, not from here. Would Cal know if we can jam it? Um, she does not. She's the navigator. She's okay. not. She's not the communications officer. So um, she begins sort of heading outwards, and you can see as she stands up, she stands up sort of prim and proper, even though she's like badly damaged. Thank you for coming. I just want to get all these people home. And uh, she moves out of the room and heads towards the captain's office. Cap looks concerned. Uh, yep, massively. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm right there with you, Gav. I'm right there with you. Yeah. Yeah. And she, she sort of puts her hands over and, and her eyes flutter for a moment and she goes override and the doors open you see like a a planning office and it's a very well decked sort of office space you know there's a glass table there's holographic sort of maps and stuff around there's a open bottle of very expensive looking scotch (laughs) with a glass that hasn't been finished and uh, as you stood there he is um he must be in his room. I would, uh, if you would wait here one moment, I will fetch him. And as she heads over, and she sort of, she tries to access the door. She knocks on the door. Captain, the help has arrived. I think they're here to help fix the communications on the ship. It's all quiet for a moment until you hear moving in the room beyond. It's a sort of a bit of a shuffling noise, and she she turns around to to look to look at you. And she goes, ah, "Good, he is here." Um. Once I once he is back to the bridge, everything will be fixed and the door and Wendy kind of grab at her and pull her back <laughs> if I roll a speed check make a well mm. make a this is going to be I would say make a fear save. This isn't a stress one, Wendy. This is just to see if you can act quick enough. No! No, 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 no. <laughs> Do I gain you a stress can... for that? Because I gain stress when nearby crew fail saves. Yes. Ah, uh, you, yeah. Oh, God, we're going to kill the doc. Okay. Uh, that was an 81, which is not less than 42. Okay. These dice are fired. Okay, and what happens when the door opens? You, you go to move towards her. So, Wendy, you are closest. And she looks back and she's talking about how the captain is. And the door opens. And there is a figure stood there. Um, and you have not seen what the captain looks like. <laughs> Super handsome. Mm. Quite dreamy. Listening Adonis. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, he's Hemsworth, perhaps. He's glistening <laughs> in a certain way, but more in the way that half of his face looks melted. Oh, piss! <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, I need to put the encounter music on because things are going to get a bit crazy again. Um, and you can see. What looks to be the head of a human man, a very tall, broad-shouldered human man, grey hair, sort of slick back, but it looks like his skin is stretched too tight 
over something and his eyes are gone and the bottom part of his mouth is like just stretched open revealing strange like wires and like there's almost there's metal underneath it and he has stood there as he's slumping forward and like you see his head lift up and he kind of towers over (laughs) Cal and you see like there's this and the eyes sort of flash red for a moment and then you see the arm itself isn't like a human arm there is organic tissue with wires, pipes and it is enormous and as Cal turns round this arm just completely flashes out and punches her face completely obliterates her head and slams it down onto the floor just pinning the body to the floor And but the the thing about the, the captain is he still stood up the arm extended and pinned the android down and as you see like the android's body is sort of twitching there's a and like it looks like this thing is sucking whatever there is to this android and you can see like through pipes and wires like android blood and viscera just <laughs> like it's just being sucked up for as this as this thing is almost devouring her with this one arm as it, as it sort of looks down and just looks up at you like <laughs> And that's where we're going to leave this week's session. (laughs) You have been listening to Safe Space, a tabletop role-playing podcast featuring the Mothership game system by Tuesday Night Games. Playing the game were Jim Bamfield as Zam Brazel, Lizzie Boyle as Wendy, Gavin Mitchell as Dick Sloan, PJ Montgomery as Dr. Bill Forrest and Vince Hunt as the Game Warden. Podcast produced and edited by Vince Hunt. In-game music composed by Tabletop Audio. Visit tabletopaudio.com to discover a world of ambient music you can use in your home games. The Safe Space theme was composed by Elliot Red. Find more of Elliot's work on YouTube. To find out more about the Mothership RPG system, visit mothershiprpg.com Follow the show on social media at Safe Space RPG and for more podcasts visit lawbreaker.podbean.com This has been a Lawbreaker Radio production.